Hello and welcome to another episode of Movies That Make Us. I'm Jake. I'm Tracy. And I'm Val. And it's now the second week in January when this comes out. I hope your first week was great. We don't know because, spoilers, we are recording this <laughs> before we're, that time. We're recording There's this a... early because I am going out of town. Usually it's Val yes. going out of town. But you're, well, I am also going out of town. But you're going oh. out of town for like a really awesome reason. It's a go warm. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's uh, it's finally dopey weekend. By this, by the time this episode drops, it'll all be over. Yep. So, I'll, so I'll thank you be... to everybody that donated and yes, we cared raised over and... five thousand dollars for American Cancer Society. So that is awesome. But yeah. it's so funny because I've got friends who live in Florida who are like, "Oh, it's going to be like fifty degrees as a low. It's going to be so cold." I'm like, "Oh, shut up." Just yeah. perfect for it. running. Right? That's 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 shorts weather where I come from, man. Like fifty <laughs> degrees, like when we hit fifty degrees in March. Dog. It's time to pull those shorts out and the flip flops. Let's go. In the meanwhile, I've got twelve inches of snow out on the driveway that I have to go shovel. <laughs> I'm not yeah. thinking about it. That's 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 future Jake's problem. I got the I got the <laughs> I got the driveway done. I still have to do the sidewalk. Uh, well, I I literally left today. And I took the shovel because I usually will pull out like the snowblower, but I just took the shovel and went right down the driveway because my driveway's like this. Yes, yeah, where my car right could away. go out and then get back up. And yeah. then I put the shovel away and I got in my and car. I'm good. By the time I got home, it was like I did nothing. So if yeah. I would have yeah. done the whole driveway, it would have been stupid. Yeah. And yeah. so far this year, it's been like a light, fluffy snow. And so this it's been. Not. This isn't, but no. up until now it has been. So I've got I've got a shovel that looks like it's it's got like a slant to it, so it just kind of like snow plows yeah. it, so you don't have to sit there and heat yeah, it. smart. It doesn't work in this kind of snow, yeah. so <laughs> especially when it's this. Thick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We so. we shoveled before we left um, this morning, right at like nine a.m. And then and my wife put a bunch of salt down because she thought, okay, that'll prevent it from accumulating too much. And we came home and it just covered the salt up. There was, it hadn't <laughs> done, it, it has just been relentless today, which is. We need it. So it's, we, we need, need the it. Moisture. And it's, we need the we do. moisture. We need the moisture. As everyone in Utah says, <laughs> I don't know moisture. why we're so obsessed with moisture. We because don't, we need we the don't, water. We need yeah. the well, water. We, no, I get why we're obsessed yeah. with the water part of yeah. it, but the word moisture, I don't <laughs> understand. Yeah. Anyway, it's because it's because people a lot of people hate that word, and so other people say it just to drive them nuts. I, I think like that's the word moisture, but um, it's because I think of it as in terms of weather and cake, yeah, like that's yeah. Like, I want a moist cake and I want yeah. moisture in the air, uh -huh. so yeah. like. If I if my cake's not moist, then what what am I doing here? Like, why yeah. would I want that? It's dry right. and gross, Please. yeah, you don't need that in your mouth. Melt deserves better than that. I really want cake now. <laughs> well, I, when this episode airs, I will probably get cake because this is going to come out on my birthday. Yay! Hey, so, happy birthday! Uh, birthday. I'm yes. hoping what, for my birthday. What's that? 23 this year? Yes. If 23. he was turning 23 this year, I'd have a lot of questions. Yeah. About the, his six children. My 16-year-old son is probably <laughs> the number one question. Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, all I want for birthday for my birthday this year, though, it, it's just a couple of things. Number one, I want Tracy. I want you to finish the Dopey Challenge. I think that's awesome. I'm you'll hoping do great. For... You'll you'll do it. Uh, and then number two, I want everyone that's watching this on YouTube to like this video and subscribe to our channel, and then leave a comment on what you want do for your for birthday, birthday this year. Do it for yeah. the birthday boy. Yeah, do it for my birthday. Say just a, just comment. I for my birthday this year, I want, and then just put whatever gift you want in there. It can be silly, it can be serious, it can be whatever, uh, but like just that. leave a comment. So, well, the cool thing about subscribing to us is because what I did yesterday is I went through my email and I unsubscribed to all these things that just poke at me all the time. Yeah. Like I thought I liked you, and then so I subscribed, 
to whatever mm -hmm. blog or whatever. Um, and then now I'm getting like 50 million things. Don't we don't do that. Yeah. No. We don't do that. We, if you subscribe to us, you'll just get a notification once a week that our show's up. That's it. Yeah. We'll just be like, Hey bro, uh, shows up. Do you want to, do you want a ticket to a movie? We'll yeah. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. Yeah. So you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You're going to get a notification when a new video goes up. We do one a week and occasionally we've started doing reviews of newer movies. And so you might get two a week, but I promise this you won't year, be annoyed. We'll definitely, you'll might be getting two a week. But the cool thing is about YouTube. Uh, I turn my, it doesn't tell my email. It only tells me yeah. when I go on YouTube on that YouTube. I have all these new things to watch. Cause I don't want YouTube to be spamming my email and so i love that youtube gives me the option to just as soon as i log in it says here's all the things you want to look at and then i go look at all those things and then i close my eyes and i walk off youtube because yeah. i don't have that kind of time in my life and <laughs> and we know that Especially you're definitely you talk videos to watch you're definitely going to want to be notified when those new videos come out so you'll want to not just subscribe but click the little bell and that will send those notifications that val talked about uh, so that you know when we have a new video out. Um, and, and this year it's going to be wise to subscribe, but also following us on social media because there are so many Disney Marvel movies coming out that we're going to have tickets for the yeah, pre-screen. Yep. So if you want to see Ant-Man and Wasp, which is going to be an amazing movie, if you want to see Elementals, which I'm so excited about, yeah. Yep. You want to follow. And speaking of Ant-Man and the Wasp, you, you definitely want to follow us on Facebook. Um, that's where we do a lot of our contests. Uh, and so you definitely want to join us there. Um, but speaking of Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, Quantum Mania, I do appreciate that for my birthday, Marvel is releasing a special extended look. I mean, yes, it's during the national championship game, but it's really <laughs> for my birthday. And I just appreciate them doing that for me. So. And that extended look is going to change your mind if you thought that this is just another Ant-Man movie and why do they have to make another one? I'm a Paul Rudd fan, but I was like, I don't know about this. When I saw this extended look, I was like, okay, take my money. And I'm I don't so even have to pay for it, but I would just give them my money anyway. I'm so excited to see what Jonathan Majors brings to this. To this I film. love him so much. He like, is so great. And this is just the little sample that we got from Loki. I am yeah. so excited to see what he brings as Kang. This is going to be a big year for Jonathan Majors. Yeah, guys. he's going to be in Quantum Creed Mania three. and then Creed three. Those yeah. are two like, movies that are on um, my top list. He looks amazing in Creed <laughs> three, and his character incredible. looks. I mean, it. Yeah, I am so excited for that movie. Dang, man. And they moved the um, when that movie is coming out, they moved it up. They moved Creed up. So it's actually going to be at a time where I might be able to do something special for the pre-screening. So I might Ooh. be, might be celebrity boxing sh match shenanigans. Tracy, Tracy versus Val celebrity bo boxing match. <laughs> We're just in there. Presented by movies. That make us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Considering we I've each never other thrown we feel a punch bad. in my life, never been swung at. So this will be fun. <laughs> no, that's not what I was thinking, but okay. I'm sure I could find somebody out there that wants to fight me for money. <laughs> I'm sure there's like please, at least 10 people. Please email us if you're interested in fighting Val. For I'm money. not going to fight people. That's not about me. But what I was thinking of is just doing a special screening. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what I can awesome. get together. I would love that. That would yeah. be awesome. That we we've talked so much about the Creed movies and the Rocky movies on this show and how much they mean to each of us that I think that would be something special that we could put together. The movies I that think make us cool. screening. Yeah, but totally big see things. See what kind of year. magic. I'll see what kind of magic I can work. Well, see, no, if anybody it, can. Just being, but being friends with Val is just so great because she does these shenanigans that you get to be a part of and it's just so delightful. It's, it's great. Yeah. And some like I definitely include oh, dropping ahead. off uh, homemade uh, treats for Christmas, which were delicious, by the way. Thank oh, you. They were yeah. delicious. My kids enjoyed oh. those. That was a nice treat for yeah. Christmas. And it was also nice because babe was there. So we could say hi babe. to babe when he. Babe. Babe is so yeah. We're babe. So uh, no, 
I'm not friends with Valve for the shenanigans, but it is no, a definite it's benefit. A definitely a, it's definitely a, a plus. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. So, I appreciate that. Even if she does have a nose ring. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this person is going to like, if he even listens to our show, is going to be like, why do you keep, just don't come to my page and harass me and I won't like, go to your yeah. page and harass you. If you come to my page on social media and you harass me, I have the right to then do this. The show. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not like we've said who this person is or nope. anything. He they know who, who they is. are. We didn't gas yeah. them. Yeah. We, we didn't dox anybody. We didn't dox them. That's the word. Not I was yet. Thinking. That will be for the third episode of the year. <laughs> <laughs> We're really nice people. I just think it's funny. Like if you didn't, if you don't know about the nose ring, go back to last week's episode and watch last week's episode <laughs> we, and you'll know what, what happened with the nose ring. We are killing it on self promotion so far this year. <laughs> people go back and watch Two old days episodes. <laughs> Tell people Two to like and subscribe. <laughs> um, yeah, but of course we've got to put good content. And today we have an excellent movie to talk about. Excellent. See, excellent for our 170th episode. <laughs> we all just gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to sing something while you're doing it. You can't. Well, stream close up. Yeah. Camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two, camera so one. So we mentioned last week that we are doing movies because January is just the worst month out of the year. I don't care. <laughs> February is just as cold and dark, but it's three days it's shorter. Short. So January <laughs> wins for worst month of the year. Uh, and so we wanted to make your January better by picking movies that we feel pick us up and make us happy. Last week, we talked about Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. You definitely need to check that movie out. Today, I picked this one. We are talking about Wayne's World. It's my birthday. I said, this is a movie that I can put on. And it always just cheers me up and makes me happy. And so we are talking Wayne's World. <laughs> so that's why Tracy's doing the extreme close-ups. He's not just... <laughs> I just have to say, like, when you get a minute, and this isn't me being, like, hating on anybody, but mm -hmm. go on the Google and look up Wayne's World cast and look at the pictures of ev what everybody looks like now. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to think, they also looked crazy back then, and they were mm -hmm. all cast to... Yes be the leads in this movie during a time where we only put tan beautiful people on the big screen like during the time this movie came out we in 1992 it was all about baywatch and it was uh -huh. all yeah. about beautiful tan well, people and then you have a whole cast of nonsense like yeah. it's the best thing ever well and the the thing too is like this this kind of was the first snl movie mm -hmm. that came out and it, this was not a guaranteed hit I think like blues brother well we consider blues it, brothers yeah but it's so it's maybe but, not the first but it's one but of, this kind of kicked off that trend in the 90s because yeah. it was this and then there and were then, a bunch and, after and, yeah but it was just if you've got a skit then let's just put it into a movie which didn't work very no, well no that did not work out most of the time <laughs> So yes, did for Marcel the first. Shell. Yeah, for Marcel the Shell. But but I'm thinking but there's been like, so many years between this movie and Marcel yeah. where those movies did like, not work there, out. There was this movie, and then there was like it's Pat, there was like the Coneheads, Night there the was Roxbury. Night at the Roxbury, oh, the Roxbury. Uh, Superstar. Like yeah. there was just a bunch that yeah. I never like, got that character. And and like the skits, I appreciate the skits were, were funny, but, but then did they it need just to be seemed movie? like, right. yeah, exactly. And, and for whatever reason, this one worked. And it's funny to your point, Val, I feel like the character of Wayne and Garth, these characters were made to kind of make fun of these people, like yeah, everything right. on Saturday Night Live. If you guys don't know what Saturday Night Live is, wow. <laughs> Sorry. But also it's a parody of life and they are making fun of people in their skits. And I get that. But somehow Wayne and Garth ended up being cool, despite the fact uh -huh. that this was supposed to be making fun of these people. And uh, like, it just worked. And part Dana. of that is Mike Myers and Dana Carvey are amazing performers. Yeah. 
And yeah. I think part of it too is we can all imagine ourselves being in our parents' basement doing a small little show with our friends. Uh, tell me how that's any different than what we're doing right at this very minute, well, except that we're not in most our... Most of the time I'm in my dad's basement, so <laughs> yeah. I feel like we got it down. I feel like... like I felt like I it was you're right. Really, it was... There's, it was there's something characters. that we can relate to. It was yeah. great characters. It was great writing that even though it was kind of like, you know, the Miss Harris thing is like, it's so relatable, but at the same time, so ridiculous. Right. Yeah. And this is obviously more ridiculous than Mrs. Harris goes to Paris, but like, <laughs> this is probably one of the most quotable movies ever, whether it you like the is. movie or not, whether you have seen the movie or not, you, you know, know camera was. one, camera two, you yeah. know, you know, game on, we're not worthy. Game on. We're not worthy. <laughs> we're not worthy. Like how many of you, we're out playing in the street or seeing your kids playing in the, like whatever. And then a car comes game off, game on, game, yep. on, yeah. game mm -hmm. on, game on. Like we all. Yeah. So anytime yeah, somebody mentions a gun rack, I think of this movie. <laughs> I don't even own a gun, let alone many guns that would necessitate a whole rack. <laughs> yeah. This one, this one came out when I was a junior in high school and mm -hmm. I've, my parents, we, we, I just didn't stay up and watch Saturday night live. It wasn't because they were like, you can't watch it. It wasn't like that. I just wasn't watching Saturday night live. So when all my friends were so excited to see this movie and then we're like quoting it on Monday after this came out, like, what are you even talking about? Yeah. And I can't help, but every time I see this now, it just like instantly takes me back to that time period of my life. Like it's like such a time capsule in such a, in so many ways. Oh, it, it totally is. If you were around in the 90s, you'll get all of the cultural references in this. <laughs> if I show this to my kids now, no. like pulling up next to the fancy car and having him roll down his window and asking if he has any gray poupon, they have no idea why that's funny. They might be we're like, cracking okay. up because that commercial was on I mean, all the time. Right. But but they have no idea. It's a lot like, um, it reminds me a lot of like Napoleon Dynamite, whereas if you didn't grow up in the Intermountain West... Yeah, like you probably you don't get it. Get it, but yeah. those who did grow up in that time period and this, yeah, it's like okay, and yeah, it's just it's just such a time capsule. But it is so silly. This was my first introduction to Queen. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I had not heard Queen up until this movie, so oh, I wow. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah I grew up I still... in the house. It was like a lot of uh, Neil Diamond, Phil Collins. It was a lot of you know, easy not easy listening, but you know that kind of well, stuff and so phil collins just tricks you into thinking it's easy listening and then three <laughs> minutes in that drum solo hits and you realize uh yeah i the scene is so iconic the bohemian rhapsody oh. scene is just so classic and iconic and the head banging mm -hmm. i mean you know that it is something that just enters the the cultural zeitgeist when you're on a road trip with your family and Bohemian <laughs> Rhapsody comes on and your mom is in the front seat also <laughs> headbanging to it because that is how it just got into all of the pop culture. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we were talking before we started the show is like I'm watching it and I'm sitting there thinking, huh, I really need some red vines right now. Like yeah. It's like you just, you know, there's certain things that the, you see in the, the movie and you're like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm every time and, and the disc man on the dash i mean who didn't oh. have a disc man on the dash mm -hmm. at that point you know mm -hmm. i almost I ran, you know you through, cool. I ran through my neighbor's front yard trying to change out my disc man as i was going around the corner on my way to school one morning <laughs> and i was like oh my gosh so i backed up and i parked and i'm like do i go tell them like there wasn't any damage so i'm like you need to go tell them so i knocked up knocked on the door and I'm like, I just drove through your yard. They're like, okay. And I'm like, okay. And then I got back in my car okay. and I started my disc man before I started driving Smart. and got it ready. Thank and you. then I went. But the, the only, the only thing that was unrealistic about the disc man in the car though, is that it played great and didn't skip well, at all. If, if it had that anti-skip technology yeah. where it had that 10 second buffer. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, in 92 though, were that, was that standard it, or was that, it was uh, it was more of a high end piece. I, I mean, think they were in time. the yeah. Canadias. So maybe. <laughs> yeah. I, there's just so much. I, I mean, I do, I quoted this movie so much. I remember having the VHS wearing out the VHS on it. Uh, 
I was kind of the opposite, Tracy. I was way into Saturday Night Live. Okay. Like that is what I grew up watching. I loved Chris really? Farley. I love, yes. Mm. That's weird. I. That's not, I, I wouldn't have expected it. I, I know. And like I I'm don't, happy about it, but I, I wouldn't have expected yeah, it. Yeah. Like Chris Farley, Adam Sandler, that time frame on Saturday, Saturday Night Live, I would watch every week. I loved it. And I even had the VHS cassettes that they put out that were like the best, the best of Mike of, Myers, the best uh, of Chris Farley, the best of. Now you yeah. just need um, YouTube and you can watch all that. Right now. Right. We just consume media differently now, but I still <laughs> would go back and watch those. Yeah. So I, I loved this, but really it is weird because this one worked, but so many of the others didn't. Oh yeah. Yeah. And this one worked so well that they did a sequel that honestly isn't as good, but isn't awful. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's been a while yeah, since I've seen it. I'll, I'll trust it. It had some good parts. There were some good parts yeah. to it, but it wasn't the same magic. No, and I agree with that. Like there, there definitely was magic that was missing, but um, it was still better than all the other Saturday Night Live movies in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So. yeah, there's some stinkers. Um, there's a lot I of drugs in the 90s. I think people just didn't know. They were <laughs> doing drugs and making movies. Yeah. Crossing their so, fingers. Yeah, I don't think I knew at the time when I was watching Saturday Night Live how big a part of the drug culture Saturday Night Live was. <laughs> but Yeah. Now you now look back and you're like, oh. Oh, oh. That makes a lot more sense now. Uh, <laughs> Did you? Have I love role? Rob Lowe in this movie because oh he God. is kind of the one good-looking tan person in it, and he is such a good villain in these '90s yeah. comedies. This and Tommy Boy. And <laughs> yes, he is so good. He, he found his his. He's always been so good at like finding his niche at the time and going with it. Like during yeah, the nineties, mm -hmm. it was these characters. And then he, it was like the early two thousands. He figured out that he was really good on those, like playing those lifetime movie, yeah. like reenactments of like all of these serial killers and like all of this stuff. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like, why is he playing all of these then, awful people? And but then he it was good. Himself on Parks and Rec. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he just, Chris Trigger is just awesome in Parks he, and Rec, like the happiest go lucky so guy. Good. Yeah. And he like the character of Benjamin in this. I mean, he's just and like they have no idea that he's exploiting them and right. that he's using them and everything and I just he plays it so well. Someone the being love interest with in the music business? What? In the 90s? <laughs> what? what? No. I, I love when Garth's reading through his planner. Find local uh access cable show and exploit them feel bad for those guys like puts it away. <laughs> do you guys remember this is a total 90s thing but do you remember the uh vh1s behind the music uh-huh yeah uh -huh. i love that so yeah. there was one where they were interviewing the goo goo dolls and okay. so the the bassist robbie he's like yeah i was super excited to do this and so then they cut to the lead singer johnny and he's like yeah we took it to our attorney friend and he looked at it and he's like, this is a slave contract. This is horrible. You should not sign this in a million years. I would never sign something like this. I can't recommend you sign this, but I don't want to be a rock star. And then they cut to them going, where's a pen? <laughs> 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 then they said after a boy named Goo blew up and they're like, our record label people are driving around in Mercedes Benzes and we've gotten like $12 from the sale of a million selling records this kind of sucks so anyway yeah. Yeah. but i just thought it was funny about i don't want to be a rock star where's the pen yeah well and that's that's it exactly you know when they're signing that contract they're sitting in the cafe and they're drinking the giant drink that that garth has and and wayne's reading through it. it's like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes i liked it and obviously they have no idea what they're signing all that they're seeing is the dollar signs from the money that they're going to get paid up front to do wayne's world uh -huh. and then later find out no they own the show he's given away the rights to it and all this other stuff we got five hundred dollars yeah <laughs> wayne can i put it back now uh not today my good man i'm feeling saucy i think i'll <laughs> buy it <laughs> do you take cash Cha -ching! <laughs> so, um have we done a as, movie 
go ahead. I, I think this might be the second most silliest movie we've ever done. I'd have to go back and look at the the list for evidence. I don't know. Clifford, you said is the number one? I would say Clifford is the silliest movie we've ever discussed. Yeah, Clifford is a really silly movie. I would agree. But this is this is was I on that episode? I don't even remember. I don't think you were on the Clifford episode. I don't think you were on that episode. I don't remember being sillier than this. Yeah. No, this is definitely yeah, it was a movie itself being silly. Yeah. We're always yeah, I was gonna say this is not that silly for we us. We have some after dark episodes where it got silly. Top Gun. We have an episode called Sock Puppets about Top yeah. Gun, and if you don't know what sock puppets are, <laughs> the, I'm not gonna explain uh, it. Oh, I need to go revisit that episode. The, the supersized uh, Star Wars episode was quite the great one too. Yeah, there were a lot of people on that episode. <laughs> Whew. Producer Zach. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> but movie wise, I think this may be up there with Clifford is, as far as silly. There. Like, it is yeah. a really silly movie. And it, to me, that's what makes it a guilty pleasure. Like, I can objectively take a step back and say, yeah, I get it. It feels dated. I get yeah. that it's, you know, it is what it is. They are completely aware the whole time of what they're yeah, making. Absolutely. They don't yeah. care. Like, yeah. this is a funny movie. They know that it's silly. They know that it's over the top. And so everybody just leans right into it. And that's mm -hmm. why it works. It it's had a different purpose, when something... its purpose was supposed to be funny for this time period. And yeah. it was. That's yeah. what the purpose was. Exactly. And so for me, like, it holds up better than a lot of other things just because they knew what they were making when they made it. And it wasn't supposed to be anything more than what it is. Yeah. And I think that, that, that it works. So, and that's as we were getting ready for this episode um, for recording this weekend, I watched Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. Uh, Cause I hadn't seen that and watched it, loved it. Uh, and then I was like, Oh, now I've got to watch the other movie. And my wife's like, yeah, you definitely need to make sure you watch that one before you talk about it. <laughs> you might not like, remember yeah. much about it. I said, I, so I, we put it on and then as I'm quoting the movie throughout the whole movie, she's like, yeah, good thing you watched this before you guys talked about it. <laughs> Like okay, so maybe I was just looking for an excuse to watch it, which is fine too. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. So, this is this is one of my favorite movies. Like, you know, when people talk about what are your ten best movies or whatever, I don't know that I would put this in a top ten best movie list. But if you're talking right. about favorite, I could sit down and watch it anytime. This movies. Is, this makes my list pretty high. This was like honest. Val's end of the year list for 2022. This was the the movies that make you feel good. Yeah, the satisfying, yes, not necessarily satisfying the movies. best. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's and that's how I feel about this one. There are a few movies that, like this one, Tommy Boy is another one where it, just the time that they came out and how much I watched them and what it meant to mm -hmm. me growing up. That objectively, I can look at it one way, but if I'm going to give it a grade, it's going to be really high because I just enjoy the movie. Yeah, and I just think it's fun. Well. And yeah, I, and Mike Myers, I think, is just. He's so talented. So is Dana Carvey. But I just, Mike Myers carries the movie for me. I mean, Dana's a great sidekick as Garth, but it's hmm. really Wayne that drives yeah. it for me. That's why it's called Wayne's World and not Wayne I know, and not Garth. Garth's There's World. Still. Garth's just his <laughs> chimp with him as always as Garth. Can we talk about the, the, the some of the cameos in this movie? Yes. Like Alice Cooper... I love Alice Cooper. Oh my Alice gosh. Cooper, do, between this and his appearance on the Muppets, I mean, like he's one of my favorite rock star comedians. <laughs> yeah. You know, in actuality, it's Millie Wake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's right, Pete. It's pronounced Millie Wake. Uh, it was and, the whole history. And, you know, interestingly, Milwaukee is the only major American city to have elected three socialist mayors. Does this guy know how to party or what? Like he, I, it, it is a classic moment. That's an, and it leads to the whole, you know, we're not worthy. Cause he's uh -huh. like, yeah, just hang uh -huh. out, just stay and hang out with us. Yeah. We'll just stay and hang out with you. <laughs> we got the lamb. Alice Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me. I, 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 if, if I couldn't help but think of, um, I love you, man. Or yeah. Uh, Jason Siegel go backstage at the rush show. And they're like, we have the, we have the laminates. <laughs> Yeah, I love oh, when they first when they first go the, back and they go out the exit because they go the wrong direction. 
<laughs> oh, I don't think we're supposed to be out here. <laughs> Sorry, that was a little more Bob and Tom, Bob and the McKenzie uh, brothers. Yeah, the McKenzie brothers, yeah. the Great White North. Um, do, 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 do. You, Jake, did you have a major crush on Tia Carrera like I did? Yeah, I think. I mean, I think we all did. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't. I, that's I did that again a couple of weeks ago. I shouldn't discount Val. Oh, anyway. uh, but I mean, yes, this was. I mean, yeah. she has long Amazon legs and that hair in her mouth, like. And she was the the, the good thing was that she was gorgeous, right? But uh-huh. she hit that comedy like she yeah. was like she, she was she didn't really good. Feel like she, it wasn't like oh, we really need to put a beautiful in woman with- in this '90s movies. Cause they would do that all the time. Like we need to put a pretty face in here and they can't right. act. Right. She is good. Like yeah. she, yeah, she did does a really good job. Fit. And I think what I liked about at least Cassandra, her character in this, you know, she good looking. Yes. But also she was just cool. Like mm-hmm. the fact that she would even pick Wayne over Benjamin, it was like, Oh, she's cool. She's like into the same kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. I don't know. It was, I don't know, Wayne in those tidy whiteies, man. Like, that's hot. <laughs> during during the gratuitous sex scene. I love the like that it flashes up on there. Uh <laughs> yes, and happy birthday, Mr. President. <laughs> Just wanted everybody to picture that one more time. <laughs> you're welcome. It, it you see that and you're like, how did he not end up as a heartthrob poster on everybody's wall? Like I, I honestly. Don't. I don't know. And, and, and so I married an axe murderer. He was a debonair guy. Like yeah. he was a good looking guy. He was. This this and so I married an axe murderer are my two favorite roles from yeah. Mike Myers. Yeah. Uh I've never been a huge Austin Powers fan. Mm-hmm. I know that was kind of his big, big role, but this to me is just well, and wasn't was Rob Lowe in that too? Way. Yeah. I Rob Lowe's so, in yeah. like everything in the 90s. <laughs> It was in his contract. Yeah, I didn't yeah. really like the the uh, Austin Powers character, but I liked Doctor Evil and his sons. Yeah, Doctor Evil was funny, and, uh, and his son. You just don't get a million shot. dollars. He's <laughs> like, listen, I've got a gun. We take it. We shoot him. You just, you just don't get it, Scott. <laughs> we are going to have a very slow moving laser, and we're going to close the door. So we don't with lasers, laser beams, lasers. <laughs> I appreciated Austin Powers for what it was, but like I don't. Yeah. Sammy used to want to watch those over and over. Really? So I was like, I'm not going to hate it because then I'm going to hate my life. But I appreciate <laughs> them because I love like all the James Bond movies and all that stuff. Yeah. So I loved what they were doing, right. but yeah. I didn't always love everything that was going on. Yeah. Yeah. That character is not one of my uh, yeah. favorites. No, not not one of mine either. But and I remember being excited about Austin Powers because I loved Wayne's right, World. Right. Mm. And then it's like, yeah, this isn't quite the same. Obviously, <laughs> it's totally different. And that's okay. I think it's mostly the teeth. Yeah, but it's the better teeth. than the guru. Yeah, the love guru is not good either. <laughs> he, had, he had a rough stretch there. And then Shrek came along and he was fine. Mike Myers was fine after Shrek. I'm, I'm so. not a big Shrek guy. Okay. But a, a good thing is a lot of other people were. So. True. Yeah, that's, yeah. you know. Yeah. 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 I don't know if you've heard, but Shrek was actually a pretty big hit. Oh, I, I wasn't saying it was. wasn't. I was just saying no, it I didn't know, Tracy. really work for me. But I like, know, and I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I did no, love but, the gingerbread man, though. Yeah. Yeah, the gingerbread man. But also, cameo-wise, you get the T-1000 from Terminator shows up in this movie, pulls him yep. over. Yep. I love that scene. Uh, you've, you've got uh, Bill Murray's brother in this. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> as Noah from Noah's Arcade. You know, she's very creative. She's the one that came up with the name Noah's Arcade. I just opened my mouth and out it came. Wow. Brilliant. Noah's Arcade. <laughs> I took his first name, said Arcade. There you go. Like it wasn't even like you thought it was like a play on Noah's Ark. No, she no, just no. said Noah's Arcade. That was it. Uh, it's funny to watch this movie now because I think when I watched it first as a kid, uh, 
a lot of the jokes went over my head that don't go over my head now. And uh -huh. I love that. Like <laughs> some of the stuff is just really funny. <laughs> that back then I was like, yeah, I'm laughing because I think I'm supposed to, but I don't totally know why that's funny. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 I think that was a lot of movies that we all saw in the nineties as kids. Like we're yeah. watching them and we don't know why we like it or why we think it's funny. And then later we watch it and we're like, whoa. Well, like, especially some of the cartoons, like some of the Warner Brothers stuff, the mm -hmm. Looney Tunes. There's some stuff in there where you're like, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> now, I was thinking, because we've talked about kind of the connection between our show and Wayne's World and how really it's not a lot different what we right. do compared to what Wayne and Garth do. Uh <laughs> But, you know, the part where they're talking about they don't want to sell out to sponsors, I just want to make it clear to anyone who's thinking about being our sponsor, we will sell out. All right. Totally. We will. We are totally OK with it. You want me you to know. dress head to toe in Reebok? I will do it. <laughs> you have Reebok. You, wow. If you are a fan of the show, you know that we have gone to Maria's twice. Maria's yep. Mexican restaurant and they are not a sponsor. And we have talked about how good the food is and how much we, we enjoy it. We've gone to Galaxy of Games. We love Galaxy of Games. Megaplex. They've been great. Megaplex. Megaplex, hit us up, man. Jeff, give us a call. <laughs> I mean, they give us a crap ton of free stuff. So this is I true. know. That's true. Yeah. All right. But we need the dollar dollar bills. We need the cha-ching. Cha -ching. <laughs> <laughs> Someday that will be mine. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It he will. does this every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, how many Get times over you, it? How many times do you think you've seen this? Uh it it's it give me a rough estimate. I would have to say it's triple digits at least. Okay. Hey, that's kind of what I was wondering. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, it it's one of those that just honestly, I'm like, okay, I'm feeling down or I'm feeling crappy. Well, let's watch Wayne's World. Oh, that always sounds on. good. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, but yeah, it's definitely one. I mean, it's good. It's been enough times that if I leave the room when I'm watching it and I come back, I can pick up right where it was. I know what I missed. I know like it's, it's one of those big ones for me. So uh, I love the Stacy. I love the relationship there. You know, Stacy, we broke up two months ago. Doesn't mean we can't still go out. It does actually. That's what breaking up is like. There's just so many great characters in this. I don't know. But yeah, probably easily triple digits. And it might be, I mean, it might be not just like 101. It might be like 200 times. Like it's up there. That's cool. So I don't know what a lot is because I'll say that seems like a lot for a movie. But then other yeah. people will be like, well, I've seen this movie like 5,363 times. Yeah. Well, that's a lot. Who else are you doing with your like life? the guy who saw the first Avengers movie like every day for the entire theatrical run or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, I couldn't. The only reason this movie has gotten as high as it has in the number of times that I've seen it is that's over like 30 you years. Grew up with it. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up with it. I watched it a lot as a, you know, growing up as a teenager. You have a lot more free like time. Yeah. Yeah. But anymore, then... you could totally do that. And it wouldn't be a lot of time because some movies aren't even in theaters six weeks now. Right. Yeah, that's true. Now, if it was like E.T.'s theatrical run and saw it every day that it was out, like that would be, that's that would a be an accomplishment. Story. Yeah. But yeah, I couldn't, I don't think I could watch this movie like 200 days in a row. Yeah. I'm not, and I'm not over. throwing that out there as a challenge. Like, I really honestly don't think. <laughs> we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that to you. New yeah. Year's resolution. Yeah. Just because there's a lot, I don't know, it reaches a point where it's like, okay, I, should watch something. I need a palate cleanser, you know, mm -hmm. it's that pizza every day thing. Like I love pizza, but I really couldn't eat pizza every day. Good point. Yeah. So I could is this like, is this like your version of Moana to Val? Like when you need that palate cleanser, you, you just reach for Rain's world and throw that in. But I, it Moana could be. is only a palate cleanser when something is super, super scary. My pride and prejudice is my, like I probably watched that movie at least five days a week. Wow. Yeah. All right. That's a lot. It's like if I if I know I'm gonna have a hard time going to sleep, I turn it yeah. on because like you, I know every scene. Yeah. The music is calming, the coloring is calming, 
the story is whatever. Like it's like, I know what it is. If I'm having a bad day, like I turn it on, like I don't want like, but yeah, I probably turn that movie on at least five days a week at some point during the day yeah. to like get me through something. We have been doing this show for a long time and that's that I did not know that about you. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. It's, and it's the, uh, Kara Knightley Kaiser version Knightley. of Pride and Prejudice because the, that's my favorite cinematography. He's that movie and cinematography too. is probably in my top 10. Wow. Nice. Yeah. I, I think the hard thing for me to answer a question as far as if this is a palate cleanser like Moana is for Val. Mm -hmm. I don't put myself in a lot of positions where I need that kind of palate cleanser. <laughs> well, like, it's not your job to. Yeah. They're, right. They're, they're, exactly. They're, 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 I'm not in, I'm not in a position where I have to go see the horror movies. And so, <laughs> well, and it's that time of year where they're putting out the movies that I like, this is, yeah. it's funny because the beginning of the year and then around October, the horror movies come out Yeah, and, yeah. and there's not much else. Like if there was like a horror movie in a batch of five other movies coming out, I could get away with not watching it. Megan is the only movie that yeah. came out last week. So that's yeah. why I talked about Megan, didn't go see it, said, if you want to go see it, go see it. And then I gave my top 23 yeah. of 23 uh -huh. because I was like, I don't want to go see that movie. If that's your well, jam, great. Not my yeah. jam. And that, that is just yet another reason to add to why January is the worst month of the year. <laughs> <laughs> but this week the reasons keep stacking up this week a man called Otto comes yes. out that and so I have to say I bawled the entire time I watched that movie both good cries like sad cries and happy cries okay well, I have I have two Megaplex tickets thanks to Megaplex and our ugly Christmas sweater party I don't know if I use them my wife that. and I will go see don't use them for that okay I mean it's a good movie, but then you can also stream it in like a week, I think. All right. Maybe yeah. we'll wait. It, it's one that doesn't okay. need to be seen on the big screen to appreciate that's, it. That's I would I say, say we have it, all it, these big it. screen mega yeah, mammoth movies coming those. out. Yeah. I mean, February yeah. and March, um, we've got, I mean, Creed, Creed's coming out the first week of March. We also have something coming out for the second week of February. Yeah. So you have, you've got time. Yeah. Plus you yeah. get all the Sundance movies that'll start streaming yeah and and it's interesting i think of movies that way now like is this one that i need to go see in the theater or can yeah. i wait until it's streaming and like top and that's Gun, how i Maverick, rate my movies had to go see it in the theater uh -huh. yeah. avatar way yeah. of water if you haven't gone to see it, it 3d yet yeah. you have to go no. see it that way yeah. yeah don't wait for those to stream I mean, no. Maverick is streaming now, and it is still really fun to watch on the small screen, but, but not as much fun as it was. Yeah, it was something to see on the big screen, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, if you haven't gone and liked this video, please do so now. Subscribe to our channel. It's all what, I want for my birthday. For Make birthday. my birthday wishes come true. Subscribe to our channel down below. Click the bell for notifications. Leave a comment with what you want for your birthday or leave a comment on why January is the worst month of the year or what Jake should get for his birthday. Like what would you buy Jake as a gift? Yes, that sounds great. And I then Jake would I'll be send you my stuff. address and you can Amazon it right <laughs> over. <then> <laughs> I don't know that you should be giving your address out to people. Well, no, it'll be in a DM. So it's safe and fine. <laughs> <laughs> there's amazon pickup boxes for reasons don't oh, give yeah. people your address uh but we we would definitely appreciate that um and you're not going to regret subscribing to our channel i promise we've got some good stuff coming out youtube wise this year so uh but let's give this movie a grade i'm going to start i told you at the very beginning i was not going to be unbiased or objective about this in any way this is an a plus for me i can watch this movie a anytime plus. wow yeah. And that's rarefied air, but I, you have to understand I, that is an A plus with an asterisk recognizing sure. that I'm being yeah. completely You don't have to explain your A plus. It. You don't yeah. have to explain your A plus. Yeah. yeah we, but I can watch this over and over again. I do. I love it. Uh, not 200 days in a row, but you know, <laughs> no movie should be like that. So yeah, we, we've had plenty of movies where it's like, my nostalgia grade is this. If I were yeah. to grade this, if it came out now, it would be this, but nothing, nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm going to go a B plus on this one. I, like I said, I wasn't as big into the characters when I was younger. Um, yeah. I, I, but I mean, I like it. I laugh. It's funny. 
Um, but it, it wasn't particularly my jam back then. Um, so, but I mean, it's still a fun movie. It's still good. It's worth checking out. It's, it's been out since 92. So if you haven't seen it in a while, throw it on it, it, just for the nostalgia trip. Yeah. Yeah. If you grew up in the nineties, put this movie on, it'll make you laugh. Yeah. It's a solid B for me. I loved it back then. I love it now. Um, I love all the quotable moments, um, of the movie. It's not my jam like Jake. Um, but mm-hmm. I can see why it is like the, yeah. the way that they, they put these um, actors together because not all comedians can be actors and not all actors can be comedians, but there is a magic with this casting. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. There's also just like all of the pop culture references that they magically put in there was brilliant. You can't always do that. I've seen it try and happen in other movies yes. and you just feel like it's forced. And mm-hmm. this was just so much it fun. Worked. And when I watched yep. it again, I didn't feel like I just went back to when I, immediately back to when I saw it originally when I was growing up, like I, I didn't, you know, I kind of had the blinders on again of like, yeah, this would only work back then. It doesn't work now. Those didn't come on for me, but I mean, it was a solid B for me then it's a solid B for me now. So. Yep. And I, and I recognize coming in that my grade was going to be higher than what you guys were going to give it. And I totally appreciate that. But it well, is it is what it is for me. I can't before, deny it. Before we go, so. though, we should mention some of the songs on the soundtrack. Oh my gosh! Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> you've Bohemian got Rhapsody, Chili, which is Red Hot, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh huh. Jimi Hendrix Experience, Foxy Lady. Yes. Uh, Hot and Bothered by Cinderella. Dreamweaver by Gary Wright. Yes. Uh, I think that's the one you need to lead us out on. <laughs> Weaver. uh well, feed my frankenstein alex uh alice cooper loving loving your loving by eric clapton they do ballroom blitz uh black yeah. sabbath time machine i mean this is it, it is a great it's soundtrack. soundtrack it it's really solid and uh but i think the most iconic is the the queen bohemian rhapsody that oh, yeah. scene with them singing i love watching garth when they're at the very end and he's not even mouthing the words he's just <laughs> and it's just like I love that scene. But yeah, the song, the the music in this is so great. Dream Weaver. Every time I hear that, I think of Cassandra from Wayne's World and when he sees her, <laughs> because that's what comes on every time he sees her. Foxy Lady and Garth singing to his dream woman, who only who never gets a name. Her name is just Dream Woman. Even at the very end. I love and, you. And Garth. I, do, I love I do you, have dream to say woman. this has one of my favorite. This is the silly one of the silliest lines, but it's one of my favorite in movie dumb. It's when he's like, Do you ever feel funny when Bugs Bunny <laughs> dress up like a girl bunny? <laughs> no, <laughs> me neither. Just I'm just wondering. <laughs> like, I, so Garth stupid. has so many great lines. Like when he says, Let me tell you a little something about women. <laughs> they want you to come get them. They love it, says the guy who won't even talk to the girl that he's interested in. But uh, I say blow chunks. If you if you hurl and she you're gonna bolts, spew. it wasn't meant to be. You're gonna spew spew into this. Into this. The, like on that note. <laughs> on that note, that's right. Thanks so much for listening, and we won't see you at the movies. Dream Bye. Weaver. This has been an Age of Geek Media Production.